Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. So, in the spirit of what this Daily Art Adventure series started out to be, when I first started, I thought, well, I'm just going to take people through, you like that glove? I'm just going to take people through whatever it is I do every day as an artist. So, that's what I'm doing today. Not did an oil, finished an oil painting earlier, and right now I'm doing a a real quick pen and ink architectural sketch. So for you pen and ink fans, here you go. This is Daily Art Adventure number, what is it? 625. Architectural rendering in pen and ink. I'll get you going, I'm gonna set you, well, let me see, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna do it this way, there we go. Got a little bit of a new uh, setup arrangement here. Working, and I hope that it does work, I think it will. First of all, here is the sketch that I'm going to be copying. And, and this is a, as it says, as the title says, simple, low budget, <coughs> very close to no budget. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be uh, tracing. So I have my light table already turned on. In fact, I can turn my light table on to an even higher setting. Yeah. And I can turn off these outside lights. There we go. That's pretty good. Oh, I should have shown, I should have done this before I turn off all the lights. So I have four uh, pens that I'm using to do this illustration. And um, four rapidograph pens. Okay. Uh, I should, well, it's hard for you to see that with all that light. Um, four rapidograph pens uh, in order from largest to smallest. So four different sizes. So the difference here. Sometimes it's different colored ink. Today, it's all brown ink, but it's large, medium, small, and smallest. So that's what I'm using. And as you already saw, I'm using a, a glove to protect the paper from the oils in my hand. Whoops, now the, the, um... My phone is telling me to rotate the camera. Let's let's see if that's really the case. Do I need to rotate the camera? I probably do, so hang on here for a minute. Let's go the other way and see from you. All right, there we go. Um, now, one of the decisions that I need to make right away in this project is a, a drawing that I do with rulers or freehand and generally speaking and in, in my opinion you don't want to uh combine those two you want either you want either uh freehand or tools that i have here at my disposal i have here a, a short stack of um uh, post-it note paper stuck here on my desk that's so that every time i pick up a pen I can just give it a little scribble and make sure it's working okay. That's pretty standard operation. And then the other tool I have is a piece of tissue in my hand so that I can wipe off the point. So I'm going to do that virtually every time that I pick up um, either a, a different pen. And I'm just going to go ahead and get started right here with probably the most prominent line in the whole drawing that that ridge line you can already see those of you who watch me often uh, you can already see that i'm following my advice that human beings cannot draw straight lines right so the only option available to us as human beings is crooked lines you with me so far can't draw straight ones because you have a pulse and your muscles twitch ever so slightly because of that pulse. Now, you have the option of drawing either pleasant crooked lines or unpleasant crooked lines. Forgive me, those of you who have you've heard this, this little lecture, this little speech so many times, you can do it in your sleep as well as mine. We have only the option of drawing crooked lines. I'm demonstrating for you what I'm about to describe, so keep watching while I talk. We 
cannot draw straight lines. We can only draw cookie runs without a computer or a ruler. But we can draw a pleasant crooked lines, which is, of course, which is, of course, what I'm trying to do right now. Or we can draw unpleasant crooked lines. Now, the easiest way to describe this is to define unpleasant crooked lines. And it's real simple. Real simple. Do you know what an un unpleasant crooked line is? I'll tell you how to draw it. The answer is try to draw a straight one. Because in trying to draw a straight one, you, if you are a living human being, you will invariably draw a crooked one because you're a human being and you're alive and you can't draw straight lines. But if you try to draw a straight one, it won't be straight and it will be uncomfortably unstraight. It, will you lose that double negative? It will be uncomfortably unstraight. Whereas if you do what I, what you see me doing in every line here so far, and yes, when I get to a certain point, I will turn off the, the light table so that you will be able to see all of this uh, slightly better. All the lines that I've drawn so far have been intentionally crooked lines. You see my hand is jittery and stop. I even look like there. I'm even leaving breaks in the line, a dot or two there. Jittery, jittery. Overshoot the mark, just overshoot the end just a little bit. In other words, make it look like the artist intentionally made all of these lines crooked. But the effect will be that I'm giving the impression of straight lines. Of course, this, this again, this is a low-budget job. This is about just about as cheap as as you can do an architectural rendering, just tracing, tracing, tracing. So I'm not having to draw carefully. I'm not having to measure, you know, mentally measure things. I'm just, just mindlessly uh, tracing away. And uh, that means that I'm free to make these uh, messy mark. And by the way, I um, I had printed off an additional copy of this um, photograph so, so that I can see details that are obscured by the uh, the paper that I'm I'm tracing through here. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of tiny details in that I can't see because I'm tracing. Okay, and what is I'm tracing through? I am tracing onto single ply um i just drew a blank hang on just a second <laughs> bristle board that's what it is but i want to i want to show you what it is anyway okay so this path more serious but it's plenty good enough for this this project and i don't i didn't want the paper any thick because the thicker the paper is uh the less i would be able to see through it. So single ply. A Bristol comes in one, two, three, or four ply. So four ply Bristol board, as you can imagine, is very, very, very thick, heavy. Um, and uh, good for all kinds of things, but not, not good for tracing, which is, of course, what I'm doing right now. Look, is that the shirt you're going to put on? Yeah. Yeah, who? To youth group. <laughs> to youth group. <laughs> oh, that was two-year-old Avi that just barged into my office to show me his shirt that he's going to put on. He was complaining to me a little while ago. He said, I can't go because he pulled up, put on his red shirt. And he said, this is, a, this is my pajama shirt. <laughs> so he's... Really excited to show me that that his mother has rectified that situation and given him a shirt. <laughs> hey, let me just for can I zoom in here? I think I can. <clears throat> well, let, let me make sure that I can first. Time. go all right can I zoom in here yes I can all right good all right let me let me show you a little bit a little trick and this this really is sort of an architectural renderers kind of pencil 
What you just saw me do was go around the bush drawing an organic, erratic, organic shape line. And then once I get to the end of the bush, I'm going to turn around and go back the other way, doing the same thing, going back in the other direction, which is really important. It's very difficult for human beings to draw uh, organic or chaos shapes. So it helps if you go one way and then back the other way. And then two more steps. One is I'm going to draw little dots as if they're, you know, leaves that have visually escaped outside the border of the bush, right? And then come back one more time and draw almost the same thing inside the border, which then appears something like sky holes, which again, in this case, should be called bush holes. <laughs> All right, so there's, there's a, a good way, perhaps, you might find interesting to draw... Um, Bad connection. Uh, sound like a robot. Whoa, thank you for telling me this. Uh, hi, Michael. I ho Is it okay now? That was a few minutes ago. Two minutes ago. Wow, sorry about that. I, I just hope it'll get better. I'm not sure what I can do about that. Very sorry about bad quality, and sometimes it's just bad streaming, which really irritates me because boy, we paid we paid good money for high speed. Dog on it, in and out. I am so sorry, folks. Should I say everything twice? Should I say everything twice? <laughs> Oh, okay, it's good now. Thanks, KJ. Well, I I am sorry about that. I, I hope it'll stay okay. I'm not real sure what I can do about it if it doesn't stay good. All right, so I'll try to repeat things adequately. Okay, so here's a... On the near side of the sidewalk, of course, you don't draw a straight line. You draw grass because, of course, the grass is in front of the sidewalk and I do this by moving my whole arm not by moving my fingers you see my fingers are still and I'm moving from the shoulder to create that that little mark same thing here along uh, the edge of the driveway now first of all you, you some of you are already thinking this is going to be a very very sterile sterile uh, illustration because it just has no life it's a it's it's if you will an ordinary boring um, you know American suburban house correct and it's an ordinary boring um, photograph of an American house correct again so I am going to have to do something to make it interesting. I'm not, and, and of course, it's uh, a medium, not a ton of um, finesse, you know, in a, in a pen and ink drawing. It's not like I'm going to introduce various colors or anything like that. One of the things that I can do is break up the foreground with some horizontal striations indications of grass that will give a, a sense of, of distance, a sense of that this lawn is reading away from us. That's a little, tiny bit of interest. I'll do uh, most of the interest in this um, illustration. Some of it will be in the, the nature of the lines that you see me drawing all the time so far, that they are, that they are not boring lines. So that will help just a little bit. What, would, what is going to give it the most life, however, will be the shading. And uh, I will follow the photograph to a certain degree for shading, but uh, take quite a bit of liberty with it as well and add elements that, that are not included in the photograph. So here you see me doing that bush or foliage trick. And go around in one direction and then go back in the other direction, and you're much more likely to get uh, a true organic sense of organic. Now, let, if I don't want this big open space in the middle, then of course I just add a little bit of 
like that, a little bit of texture uh, in the middle of that bush. Um, this little, it's a, like miniature picket fence you can see here. And you may notice that I'm drawing the pickets, like as, let's say there's 60 or 70 pickets here, and then another 60 or 80 over here. Um, one of the tricks that I'm employing is the same trick I employ in my painting, which is when you have a highly repetitive, highly repeated motif, don't draw all the pickets the same way. So I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I employed uh, a couple of different methods or techniques for for capturing those uh, those little tiny pickets in that fence. Just trying to share with you all some of the various little tricks that I've learned over the years. In this case, for doing pen and ink drawings, uh, pen and ink architectural renderings. Some of my, and you, if you want to see a lot more of my architectural renderings, I don't know why you would, but <laughs> if you do, um, you can certainly go to dannelsonart.com, click on... Um, Click on illustrations, and then inside the illustration uh, album are uh, is a is an album of architectural renderings, and I have I don't know twenty or thirty samples of architectural renderings that you can see in there. <clears throat> Never finished a couple bushes over here, so let's let's take care of those. Going around the bush one way, and then going back the other way, because your hand makes different motions uh, if it's going one direction or the other, and so that helps you achieve a sense of authentic, organic randomness. I think this bush here in the middle. I'm just I'm going to leave it more empty, just so that I have a little bit of contrast so it doesn't read smooshed together as one just one um, by just going around that bush one time again just so for, for variety again the principle of variety trumps almost every other principle in art you want variety 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 in every regard in every aspect in this case variety of line and so on. Now, so far, I've been using just one pen for this entire illustration. I wasn't sure that I would do that, but uh, it seems to be working just about right for this paper. Um, I, I say this often when I'm doing my calligraphy videos. If you've ever watched me do a calligraphy video, when you're doing pen and ink on paper, um, there is always a, a particular magic that has to happen between the ink, the pen, and the paper. Those three elements, three distinct separate elements, and they all must be working together. They all interact with each other in different ways. So sometimes if you're doing a pen and ink illustration, and say things just aren't going right and you can't figure out what's what's going wrong well it might be you have to stop and experiment a little bit and try a different pen or different ink or different paper because all three have to be uh cooperating with each other a good product and it just so happens that this this pen this ink and which by the way is actually not ink at all it's actually um very fine liquid acrylic liquid acrylic made by Holbein um, but the three are working working very well so I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with it if it ain't broke don't fix it is the the policy I'm following right now it's working very well the lines are coming up easily the pen's not it's, they're not too fat they're not too thin they're just about right so I will switch pens uh, when I begin to do the shading and I'm going to do, I think, all the shading with the light table turned off. So I will not be tracing when I when I start doing the tracing. 
So you can see this this project goes pretty quickly. It has to go quickly with the bu <laughs> with the budget. <laughs> Sorry to keep complaining about the budget, but um, with the budget that I'm working on, and by the way, don't don't tell anybody I said this, but this is for a family member. So they are getting the family discount. That's that's why it's that's why somebody's getting this illustration so cheaply. Um, so I'm glad to do it for family, but uh, I still don't want to waste any time. I don't want to <laughs> sit around going slow when I'm not getting paid very much per hour. I'm sure you understand. This is my. This is a living. This is not a hobby. It's a wonderful way to make a living, and I love it. I'm very blessed, but it is trying to make a living nonetheless. So I'm going to knock this whole thing out in an hour and a few minutes, I would think. Just about, just about finished with the initial initial uh, tracing of the building. I didn't finish these. Now, you, you don't have to draw every single plant in exactly the same manner. Because that, again, that violates the principle of variety. So, I'm being a little bit monotonous today because I just because I'm thinking about you guys and thinking about teaching this principle. All right, I, I just about yeah. I'll leave the table on the light on for just a minute. So this this area uh, in the eaves and the gables of the house. This is cedar shake siding. I'm quite sure that it's fake cedar shake siding that is vinyl vinyl siding made to look like cedar shakes is what they're called that's essentially what some some of us might call cedar shingles and uh i have a lot of experience because i've drawn done a lot of architectural architectural renderings over the years i have a lot of experience at drawing cedar shake siding and I'll demonstrate that to you in just a minute. First of all, you can see a very irregular horizontal line. The irregularity of it is is a is a reflection of the reality. In this case, it's not just me being artsy; it's me being accurate because the sh cedar sh shingles, of course, are irregular. All right, I think I can turn off this light. Whew. Turn on a little bit easier on the eyes, frankly. There we go. Uh, then let's do the, go ahead and, and do the cedar shingles. One line, two line, three line. So I just basically draw little, little horizontal lines, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three, at various, various um, distances from each other. And then the course over that is sort of like laying bricks you know you make sure that the 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 crack between uh one course of bricks does not line up with the crack beneath it does that make sense some of you know what i'm talking those of you who grew up playing with lego or things like that you know what i'm talking about when If I had a penny for every cedar shingle I've ever drawn, I'd have a lot of pennies. <laughs> okay, just about finished then with drawing the, the image. I guess I'll do a few details with a, with a smaller pen. Again, I'm using brown ink. Uh, my client in this case, yes, who is a family member who remain unnamed, my client um, thought that this was probably a pencil rendering, and in fact, they sent me some examples uh, that were indeed uh, pencil renderings. But uh, 
and I'm hoping that my judgment call is okay in this regard. Um, I don't think that pencil is the way to go. I think pen and ink is the way to go. The samples that I was sent are, were not particularly stellar. I'm skating on dangerous ground there, so I'll just I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> oh, lots of comments I'm missing. Uh, okay. <laughs> Glad I'm funny, Michael. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Stretcher bond brick where uncle you should know you should, you, that you do something like this don't you? Stretcher bond brickwork. Is that is that what this stuff is called? That what I just drew maybe over the garage door? If I remember, looking at your profile, you do something, some kind of construction anyway. Um, the point, the nibs on these, on these pens do last quite a while. Um, I would think, you know, it depends how much you use them, but years generally. Uh, I certainly, in, when I was in Illustrator, okay, so the, the drawing is almost finished. I'm going to put this thick, if you will, fat marker away and pick up a thinner one. So as I said, I'm training it, testing it on a piece of paper, then wiping it off of the tissue. But let's see. Let's see what, what kind of line that makes. Nope, that's too close to what I have already was already using. So... I'm going to go down to yet a smaller size. Now I'm afraid this one might be too small. And it's not rattling. It's supposed to rattle. The weight in it is supposed to rattle. So that means this pen might not work very well. But let me start with it. These, these pens are notoriously fussy. Infamously fussy. Um... Some of you who were born after the advent of computer art, you can be count yourselves lucky that you never had to use rapidograph pens. Of course, you can count yourself unfortunate that you never got to use rapidograph pens too. It goes both ways, doesn't it? Um, okay, so far, so far it's working. If you wonder how these pens work, I actually have a couple of videos on YouTube, on my channel, um, about cleaning rapidograph pens, and that would show you, that, that shows you how they work. It's a capillary system, there's a tiny little wire, tiny, tiny wire extending through the middle of this. Yes, yeah, so one of the advantages of these pens over the felt tip kinds is, yeah, the felt tips wear up, up so quickly. These pens, of course, are refillable. They, they, these have been refilled hundreds of times over the years. So, of course, as you can see now, I'm drawing shingles but with a with a thinner pen, so these lines aren't as as uh, strong and specific. What's the word I'm looking for? Def definitive as the thicker pen, and it, it, certainly you can see I'm using a very iterative dotted stop and start technique, trying to indicate shingles, and then I'll come back and do some. Not not. Not a lot. I'm not going to do every single, but I'll do some hor uh, vertical um, hash marks, of course, to indicate the vertical edges. Am I saying that right? Yeah, I am. The vertical edges of the various shingles. You could certainly call this entire technique Technique. Pen and ink, <laughs> its middle name is monotonous. Pen and monotonous ink. Pen, monotonous, and ink. Yep, that's exactly what it is. 
and people, artists who don't have the patience to work in this kind of thing, of course, uh, is part of what gives me my job security. Um, uh, craftsmanship is spelled Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Boredom, monotony. That's, those aren't the words I'm looking for. But that's where craftsmanship comes from. The, the discipline, the ability to do the same thing over and over and over again. That is what creates skill in workers, any kind of worker. Any kind of work. How do people get good at things? Physical things I'm talking about. How do they get good at it? The answer is doing it over and over and over. And it's not quite as fun as a video game. <laughs> but in the world of arts and crafts, uh, the prize goes to the skillful. Those who have paid the price of boredom. Um, I'm deciding partly where to go here. I'm going to do a few horizontal lines in the driveway. Again, to indicate depth. Horizontal lines in a landscape connote distance, depth. Now, my next question I've got right now is do I want to draw bricks? This is a brick house. <clears throat> and yeah, sorry to start boring you to tears, but I believe I do. I want to draw bricks. So, um, this, that, that's me tapping my pen uh, upside down, the tapping that you heard just a moment ago. A little bit of brick texture now. I'm not going to draw every brick, but I want to give the impression that this is a brick house. Yeah, we're still getting pausing, aren't we? Sorry, folks. Mm. That is quite irritating. I'm so sorry for the For the bad, sorry for the bad um, streaming quality here. Again, the lines that I'm using now, the pen that I'm using now to make the lines between the bricks is a finer point than the, than the pen that I used to do the outlines, very intentional. These lines must be more subtle than than the out than the major lines, the outline lines. Otherwise, it just becomes a hodgepodge of confusion. And again, my brick lines are stuttery, stop and start, iterative. I don't want them to be solid. That would not look like bricks. And yeah, let me zoom in again a little bit for you here. Hang on, let's see. <laughs> Bear with, boy, I do, I do zoom in far. Whoa. 
<laughs> I can't see where I am. I zoomed in so far. I lost. I lost myself. There we go. And I know you're getting a lot of dancing around there. All right, let's and do some of the impression of bricks here. I'm not going to. Uh, sometimes in my renderings, I will actually draw literally every brick, but this drawing is not does not call for that degree of uh, detail. Again, tapping my pen on the this pen this pen that I'm using right now feels like it's going to stop feels to me that it's going to stop writing any second and then I'll switch to a my backup pen whoops whoops off screen there sorry this is that vertical course of bricks above the the door and then another vertical course of bricks above that so Horatio, what's that called? There, this one is, maybe it's the end of the bricks. That's probably what it is. Starting to look like a brick house, isn't it? Whoops, I can, sorry, I keep going off my zoomed in. Let me look, let me zoom out then, because I'm just too likely to forget to zoom back in, zoom out part way. All right, now let me say that again. Starting to look like a brick house, isn't it? And again, I'm not going to bother trying to carefully place each of these vertical marks. I'm just going to scatter them around till it looks like a brick wall. That's all I care about is the illusion. <laughs> Same thing back here. I'm going to switch pens, as I said, because I, I just feel like that one is just about to give up. So uh, back to my old trick. Whoa, that's the wrong, that is the, that's the fat end. Ha, huh, I had those in the wrong order then. Well, that explains why that is so thick. And that's thick. Okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go. I don't know if I can get away with this or not. Nope, I can't. All right. I had my pens, I thought I had them in, in order from thick to thin, but I had, I somehow actually did them slightly out of order, so that messed up a little bit. I do have some, I do have extra pens in the drawer to my left. If I need to, I will fill up one of those. And it's always a good idea to clean your pens, empty them and clean them after every use. You can you can wait and clean them later, but it turns into a what is a would be a small job now would be a huge job later. So when I'm finished with this broadcast, I will certainly be um, certainly be cleaning these pens. I'm stopping. I'm looking <laughs> now. If you wonder why did he stop talking, um, I think I am going to uh, I'm going to fill up another pen, so that it gives you a chance to. Watch the process of filling. This is a size that I didn't use at first. Here is the the acrylic that I'm using. Oops. <laughs> this is the reservoir. Fill it up. Snap that lid back on. Put this on there. And then screw the handle back on and it holds it in place. And I have to give it a few shakes. Oh. And a few taps. Let's see if that works. Let's find out if that pen's gonna work. And it doesn't feel very good, honestly. So I may not get any use out of this pen at all because it does not feel the the pens when they're in top functional order. They have a you 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 begin to learn how they rattle. They have a certain feel about them. The point feels this way. And this one does not have that feel. So I just might have made myself just more work there. I'm going to have to clean out a pen that is not usable. Let's try one more. Let's see how big this one. Oh, yeah, good. It's the right size. Here we go again. So I'm going to fill up yet another pen. <clears throat> again, this is um, liquid acrylic. Not, not 
I don't know how to describe it. It's it's airbrush paint. It's not like fluid acrylic that you can use to paint with. No, 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 no. It's much it's as thin as water. Possibly thinner than water. Um Forgive all the tapping. There we all right. This one feels good. Whew. What a relief. Okay. There we go. All right, let's start doing some of the fun stuff now. You know, am I zoomed all the way out? Oops. Oh. <laughs> Again, I'm not using my uh, Mevo camera because it's in the shop being repaired. <laughs> Uncle says, a Rolock. That's a good name. Ro Rolock on top. It's a soldier cross. I think CRS cross. I need a new mason. Good. You're... <laughs> Yeah, as long as I don't have to pick them up. As long as I don't have to pick them up. <laughs> Gets heavy, doesn't it? All right, so here's my... My photograph is taped to the back of my um, Bristol board. I don't need it anymore, so I'm going to remove the photograph. And uh, let's start doing some shading. lost my again make sure everything's working right let's start doing some shading and I'm going to start easy my shading lines are quite different from my uh, drawing line Smooth shadow. not talking because I can't talk and do cross hatching at the same time proverbial chewing gum um, I'll go ahead and tell you that if doing cross hatching like this looks easy, um, you're not paying <laughs> you're not paying attention. Um, is not easy, and I'll go ahead and zoom in here a little. Uh, achieving this even this degree of that's what I'm trying to achieving that degree of regularity um, takes practice. I don't want to discourage anybody, but. Um, I started doing cross hatching when I was 10 years old. I clearly remember discovering in fifth grade, it was probably looking at Mad Magazine, discovering pen and ink cross hatching and beginning to incorporate it into my cartoons in fifth grade. So I was 10 years old, so that was 55 years ago. So I've been doing a. There are many different ways, many different styles of cross hatching, of course, of course, of course. This rather, what's the word, monotonous, pedantic, straight line technique is just one approach. I don't always do this. It is definitely my signature type technique, but others, more organic lines. And so far, all the line, all the shading I've been doing, I guess you really wouldn't call it cross hatching, would you? It's not cross hatching until it goes the other direction. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there and then decide whether, in fact, yeah, I do. Whether whether I want to do um, hatching, and I believe that I do. So I'm going to come up back up here to the cedar. Sorry, to the cedar shake part of the building and darken Not 
whoops, whoops, whoops. I'm sorry. I keep getting off. I'll try to try to pay more attention to that and keep and keep the camera on my work there. Hi, David. Camera's creating a pixel problem. I, I bet it is. I wonder if I wonder if that's uh, the stream again. So I know when it when it starts pixelating many times it's lack of uh, stream strength <laughs> for want of a better term. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I am not to, uh, I don't think I should broadcast this entire operation. <laughs> this is the kind of artwork, when, I, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, uh, that I really tend to put on a good podcast. History, philosophy, uh, science, some kind of intellectual podcast and, and keep my brain entertained elsewhere while my hand is having to do this boring, 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 repetitious stuff. But I'll do just a few more minutes here with you, just for fun, or boredom as the case may be. i got some music going kind of crazy in the background today, don't I? Still on screen. Oh, oh. Um. Now, I, I know. Before before we go, let me show you some of what I'm. I believe I'm going to do to make this illustration just a little bit more interesting and that is I'm going to do some lines clouds if you will in the sky come on pen don't give up on me now Hello. Hey, baby. Hello, welcome home. How are you? Good. Are you, are you hey, you can. I'm broadcasting, but <laughs> so I'll do some. I'll do some shading, some kind of shading up there to make the illustration more interesting. I'll go back to pen that was acting up a while ago and see if I can get it to function just well enough to do some vertical lines in the sky. Yes, sweetie, what's up? Well, okay. Okay. I won't be broadcasting too much longer. I'm going to come downstairs when I'm done? Yeah, Okay, we will do. Mm -hmm. Not too hungry because I ate kind of late lunch. I'll be hungry enough. Yep, that's fine. So I'm here in this area. I, I believe I'm going to do a, a vertical um, again, cross hatching without the cross, so just hashing uh, lots of dots so, so that the effect will be a very, very pale uh, screen uh, halftone effect. You know, very, very light, which is what I want. But just, just enough to give just a, a hint of tonality, and then tone white, 
and then tone down here, you know, uh, stripes, so to speak, uh, in the sky. And I'll, I'll keep working with it till until I'm happy. It's possible that I would come in and uh, do some cross hatching in the sky. Not not likely, or not not very much, I should say. But um, yeah. I have to do something, of course, to make the illustration feel complete, not just feel like a, a, a you know, a bad drawing of, of a ordinary house. So I'll continue that. Let me uh, go back to um, shading. The, the darkest part of this house and illustration is the shading here um, to the right of the garage. So let's do a little bit of that just for fun. I'll show you there. I'm certain I will do uh, cross hatching uh, at least three layers, possibly four. So I'll, let's do that and then I'll, I will end this broadcast, okay? So there's a downspout, a drain pipe there, um, a gutter spout. I'm going to leave white, at least for the moment. And this particular, this wall of this, of the house is very dark, but so is in here under the eaves and under the porch. That will give me um, a, a one area of the house that will give me a, a very good excuse for doing some very, very dark values, which will help the, the house, the illustration, um, have some solidity to it. I don't want it to be all feathery and pale. In my opinion, that would not be a good illustration. So there will be some dark stuff in it, and I won't know, you know, how much, how dark any particular area is going to be until the whole thing is done. Chances are the, the, the illustration will grow darker. Uh, as I proceed. But I know that this wall right here is one of the darkest areas. So I'm going to go ahead and push it pretty dark just to get started. Now, those of you who have perhaps seen my, my famous, I say that because it's far and away my most uh, popular video is the pen and ink cross hatching video. Um, I explain in that video exactly how I do this kind of uh, cross hatching. The first four layers are quite predictable. I do an X, you know, uh, the first lines are at a 45 degree and then the second line is 45 going the other direction, 90 degrees to each other. That's And this is the third layer now, doing horizontal lines. The fourth layer will be vertical lines. So that this is my fourth. Um, and I should really like to graduate to a darker. That is a heavier pen, a bolder pen, if I can. If I have one that's working well. Yeah, there we go. After the fourth layer, um, it's sort of a every man for himself. It's sort of a free for all as to which direction, which, which the grain should go with layer number four. Um, First four layers are for in this technique are quite predictable. 45, 45, 90, and 90. Or angle to the left are doing vertical, right? Straight up and down. And I'm gonna stop on this wall because I, I may find that that's dark enough for this particular wall. 
I wouldn't want to go any darker until I get more of the illustration uh, catching up, if you will, in darkness to what this is. So that gives you a little bit of an idea how this is going. Um, if you're interested, I will post. I'll, I'll scan this and I'll do a post of it on my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, <laughs> is the soft music part of the YouTube broadcast? It is. I pay uh, a monthly fee to use this thing called Epidemic Sound. And, uh, and um, I don't get into trouble then with uh, copyright infringement. All right. I'm going to stop there. Thank you guys for your company and your comments and your fun. Like I said, I'll put on some interesting scientific broadcast <laughs> or history or something or TED Talk to finish this illustration and then post it on the website.